Hi fellow travelers, today we're going to the Courtney and District Museum, but first we're making a stop at the Comox Visitors Information Center. Let's go explore this award-winning information center, which details some of the attractions and other highlights of the area. The Visitors Center acts as a gateway to the Comox Valley, where visitors can learn about the coastal industries that support the economy, as well as the regional attractions and tourism opportunities available in the central and northern Vancouver Island. This unique building was designed with consideration for the sensitive habitat of the Roy Creek watershed that lies just west of the building, and includes a number of eco-friendly and innovative features, including a green roof that improves insulation and air quality, an outdoor reflection pool that captures storm runoff, and an indoor water feature that supports passive cooling. Outside the centre, visitors can see a CT-114 Tudor aircraft. This aircraft is known as the icon of the Royal Canadian Air Force and is best known as the type of aircraft used by the Snowbirds, a Canadian Air Demonstration Squadron. Each spring, the Snowbirds migrate from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan to here in Comox, where they practice for their performances of precision flight. The east coast of Vancouver Island has been home to the Comox First Nations for thousands of years and is a place traditionally referred to as the Land of Plenty. At the visitor center, you'll see some samples of the traditional Comox culture, including a welcome arch, dugout canoe, and ceremonial masks. This coastal area sustained their traditional diet, which included salmon, herring, cod, octopus, shellfish, seal, and deer. Today, this area is prized for its outdoor adventures and is a popular destination for hiking, camping, and mountain bike riding. Or if you're up for some aquatic adventures, why not try kayaking, sport fishing, or you could do some whale watching. In the winter, there's lots of opportunities for snow-based activities like skiing and snowshoeing. The Mount Washington Alpine Resort area receives over 11 meters of snow each year, making it the deepest natural snowpack in Canada. But this exhibit warns adventurers to watch out for tree wells. And here's some information on the endangered Vancouver Island Marmot. This preserved marmot is one of only two on display in Canada. Nearby Courtney, British Columbia is known as a hotbed for finding dinosaur fossils. Let's head up to the Courtney and District Museum and Paleontology Centre now. Now we're at the Courtney District Museum and Paleontology Center. Let's go inside and explore. The museum is housed in a historic heritage post office building located in downtown Courtney. Millions of years ago, Vancouver Island was submerged under a warm saltwater sea. which provided an excellent home for prehistoric marine life. Shifting tectonic plates and glacial erosion have revealed some of the 80 million year old seafloor, providing a fantastic opportunity for the discovery of aquatic dinosaur fossils. The first major discovery occurred in 1988 when resident Mike Trask discovered the first fossil of an 80 million year old elasmosaur on the banks of the Puntledge River. The elasmosaur measures an incredible 13 meters long and was the first of its kind to be discovered in British Columbia as well as the first of its kind west of the Canadian Rockies. Months of careful excavation revealed a near complete skeleton of this dinosaur and these original bones, as well as a replica model, are on display at the Courtney and District Museum and Paleontology Centre. Just a few years later, another skeleton was uncovered. This one turned out to be a new kind of mosasaur that was unique because of its two extra rows of razor-like teeth. As exploration continues, other new types of species are still being discovered, including sea turtles, vampire squids, and multiple species of octopods. 
or these adorable Dumbo octopus, which live in the deep ocean and use their ear-like fins to propel themselves through the water. And here's the skeleton of the Hadrosaur, which is known as the duck-billed dinosaur. These herbivores were commonly found throughout Western Canada during the late Cretaceous period. It's pretty cool to find such an amazing collection of fossils in a local museum and is something that you must check out if you're in the area. And while you're at the museum, you can stop by and meet a living fossil. This is Slugzilla, the African lungfish. Lungfish are the only living fish that have both lungs as well as gills and they need these because they live in small lakes and rivers which sometimes dry up, requiring them to use their lungs to survive. Some varietals of lungfish are over 100 million years old, making it a living fossil and one of the oldest living vertebrates on the planet. The museum is also putting together a new exhibit on geology and minerals and we got to see a quick demo of how some minerals fluoresce under black light. And when you're done checking out dinos, you can head upstairs and see some of the other exhibits on site, including First Nations artifacts, the history of Courtney during colonial times, as well as other rotating exhibits. Thanks for exploring the Courtney and District Museum with us. We're heading out on another adventure soon, so if you like this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, it's time to exit through the gift shop.